John chapter 3, verse 3 to 6. John 3, 3 to 6. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Say, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Say, unless I am born again, I cannot see the kingdom of God. That's profound. That's definitive. That is eternal. You cannot change it. You cannot edit it. Your relationship with a pastor, with a bishop, your relationship with government and authorities and powerful people cannot change this. You can see the kingdom of the presidency. There are those who talk about federal minds. You can see the kingdom of the state. There are those who talk about state minds. You can see the kingdom of men. There are those who talk about human minds. But when it comes to seeing the kingdom of God, the might of God, the government of God in his power, in his might, in his miracles, in his signs, in his wonder, in his honor, in his unbreakable glory, you cannot see that kingdom. The provision of that kingdom. You can see the provision of men. You can see the provision of government. You can see the provision of human institution. But you will not see the provision of God. There are certain things that human connection and privileges cannot bring to the table. It reaches a point in life that nothing else works unless you see. That is what Christ brought us. By being begotten as spirits in God. Because God is spirit. If God fathers you because he's spirit, then you are spirit. That's what the scripture says as we will soon see. And it is spirit that sees spirit. Flesh sees flesh. Spirit sees spirit. You cannot see the kingdom of God, the authority, the, the glory, the wealth, the resources, the workings, the supernatural hand of God. You cannot see it except you are born again. And I've been saying being born again is not living a good life, not cheating on your wife. Not stealing anybody's property. Not defiling yourself in immorality. Being honest. That is human goodness. It is morality. Being a Christian implies that you live that life. But that life in itself, that I, my hands are clean. I don't steal somebody's property. I don't have problem with somebody's wife. I don't have issues with people's children. My hands are clean. That is human goodness. It's not being born again. Being born again is coming into a new nature that is supernatural. That is the nature of God that walks the earth in the flesh. That's what Jesus brought. And the scripture says, until you come into the government of that new nature, until you come into that being, that life of being a different being, a different being that now lives a different life, you cannot see. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this world will bring you a new birth. Amen. And for those who already have this new birth, that this world will establish you in your new birth in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whether you are already newly or whether you are already born new, given new nature, spirit nature, the nature of God in the Christ, or you are yet to have this word 
affects you equally. Say amen. amen. Let's read that scripture further. Jesus, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. When it comes to this point, I always try to let you know that water symbolizes repentance, a turning away from former things and a former life. And spirit implies accepting Jesus Christ as your new life. He is the spirit. The scripture says that he is life-giving spirit. And the scripture says this law, the spirit. Say with me, this law, the spirit. And where the spirit of God is, come on, come on, come on. Say this law, the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So Jesus is spirit that came in the flesh in order to beget spirits that walk in the flesh. I am spirit in the flesh. The life I live is not the life my mother brought forth. I'm beyond what human can give birth to. Make one can so one man. When you say this, it sounds arrogant. Which is what Christianity is. It's arrogant. It makes you too big. It makes you too great. So that you cannot really talk about your life as a Christian without sounding arrogant. It's an arrogant experience to be Christian. It, it puts you above things. So I am more than a woman can give birth to. My mother will wake up and will not recognize she gave birth to me. I am more than a man can bring forth. Why? Having been brought forth in the flesh, my father predicted that one will be a thief. My father will not endorse me for anything great. My mother will, I would have loved to know my mother to know what is it about me that my mother knew. Because my mother was very careful about me. My mother makes me believe in a woman naturally. I believe in a woman. A woman has to prove to me that she's evil. Every woman I see is good. So for me, I suspect every man first. Then he proves to me he's good. But I believe in a woman first. Then he, she proves to me she's evil. Because of my mother. So I would have loved to know, ma'am, now what did you see about this boy? This terrible boy that you brought forth. That you were very careful and intentional in protecting and helping and preserving. There must have been something she saw, I don't know. But I am not what mama brought forth. That's not who stands here. I am what God brought forth in Christ. No, you never see. And because I've seen those spirits, I know spirit. I don't know about you. When I'm talking about this, so that you can apply it to yourself. And if it doesn't fit in, find out how you can fit in. And beyond a woman can bring forth. And beyond what a man can bring forth. And beyond what a genealogy can produce. I am more than the history of a family. Sir, I am God's history on earth. I am of God's ancestry. So I'm a descendant of Jehovah on earth. So I'm born of God. I am God's spirit living in the flesh. The same way that Jesus was spirit living in the flesh. So that's who I am. That's what I've been brought forth to be. That's, that's the life I live. This is what makes me who I am. It's on the confidence of this and the basis of this that I talk, that I live, that I marry, that I have children, that I pastor you. Sir, so it is on the basis of this I go to the ends of the earth. Sir, so I'm beyond what human, humans can destroy. I am the only one who can destroy me. Why? I'm born of God. Sir, that's who you are. The problem is, it's not God. The problem is you seeing. So two keys about manifesting the life of spirit. Go back to that scripture. It says, most surely I say to you, unless one is born again, cannot see the kingdom. Next verse. Go to verse four. How can man be born a second time? Will you go, will you go to the mother's womb? Jesus answered, most surely I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. So the first one, he cannot see. The second one is he cannot enter. So when you see, 
your life changes. When you enter, your life changes. Stories and conditions change instantly when you see and when you enter. So the greatest striving of a believer is in seeing and entering. When you see, you are affected, depending on what you see. When you see the mystery of God's healing, cancer falls to the ground. I'm not talking about when you pray. I'm not talking about prayer, I pray for you. I'm not talking about a prophet prophesying a healer healing you. I say when you see. When you see, you can argue with a doctor. And the doctor tells you, go and live for three weeks, prepare to die. And you tell the doctor, I'll meet you in 30 years. You can't with certainty because of what you see. You say, I cannot unsee what I see. This scene we are talking about is spiritual scene because God is spirit. And this scene is in the place of you walking as spirit. Not walking as a church person, not walking as a religious person. Why do, you, why do we fast? Why do we pray? Why do we study? Why do we sit here? For you, it's social thing. You just come. It's an opportunity to grow into sin and to grow in the grades and the level of sin. Sir, there are people who see in fat. There are some people who see heaps of sand. Some people see hills. Some people see mountains. But others also see mountains of mountains. Depending, so if you see a heap of sand, you have seen an elevated height. When you see a hill, you have also seen something. But when you see a mountain, you have seen another thing. Depending on what you see, your mind is affected. Your life is affected. So the whole thing of being in church, of studying the word of God, of praying and fasting, is to invest in the spirit you, so that you can see. Because this thing we are talking about is not somebody saying for you. The lie of religion in this part of the world is prophets saying for you and manipulating you up and down. You don't have a lie. Go out today, you go out. Don't go out today. You don't greet that person. The day you greet, you die. You don't have a lie. When you see, death will see you and we we. You know, death can we we. And apologize. For coming to you. Mm, ah, ah, ah. So when you see, you become what you see eventually. You become you are affected by what you see. Ah. Oh, the wise men saw. He said, We have we saw his stars. And we have come to do what? If they didn't see his stars, what will happen? They will not come. And the scripture says when Herod sent them on their way, he said, well, when you go see, come back to us. The scripture says they went, the stars that were on another part now appeared and they were filled with joy. And so their lives changed and they saw the Lord because they saw. You will see. Amen. To see means to recognize, means to witness. Witness means to have evidence. So when a scripture says, unless you are born, born again, born in the spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God means you cannot experience. So for those who are born again and you have not experienced, you have not recognized, you have not witnessed the kingdom of God, then there's a problem. Let's end up. The second part of that scripture says, says unless you are born of water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we talk about seeing as encounter, seeing as awareness, seeing as being affected, seeing as encounter, as experience, as perceiving. What does it mean to enter? The word to enter, ace, the Greek word ace, means to access. When you talk about access, it means you can go in and take possession of something. You can go in and have what is there and have fellowship 
when there is a serious event at a social level or governmental level, you need to have a pass. There are certain weddings you don't just show up because you love wedding. You must be granted access. You see, the invitation gives you access. What that means, whatever is going on in the party, in the event, is completely kept away from you if you don't have access. That also means with that card, you have access. You can go in and the doors are thrown open. Everything that is available, you have a share in it. So, when Jessica say, unless you are born of water and the spirit, it means you cannot enter the kingdom of God means you cannot share in what the things that are available in the government of God. So, there is endless treasure, wealth, riches untold, power, wonder, holiness, righteousness, everything of God available in God. All you need is the access to enter to being born of water and the spirit. Repenting from sin and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in spirit and in truth and living the life that is the new life to honor God. It makes you enter, walk into a pool, walk into a, a pool of resources that are only available in God. What Dangote does not have. Dangote had all the might to bring about refinery. Right now, the element of darkness in Nigeria is bringing Dangote to stand still. He has access to government. He has access to Tunubu. But till now, Dangote is not selling petrol in Nigeria. There are resources available in God that no man can stop you from receiving once you have access. So I talk too much about myself, right? Like Paul. I have two people in the scripture that I relate with very personally. The Old Testament is David. The New Testament is Paul. David talks about all the Psalms of David there about his experience. Most of the writing of Paul about his experience. If you are called your experience is a message. I'm living by the resources that are available only in God. I'm living by the help, the strength, the might that only God can grant a man. I know it. If you don't know it, it's because you don't know it. I can excuse you. But I cannot excuse myself because I know it. When you enter... Whatever is available, you say, what, you, what you see, you take. Praise God. Entering into God is access. Having a pass. Whatever is available, the might of God belo belongs to you when you have access. So when you say, when you enter, when you see is an experience. And when you enter is a manifestation. Glory to God. See, you will not have access. Enter means coming into existence. Enter means arriving in. Enter means arising from. Enter means beginning to be. Enter means being established in. So when it says, except you are born of water and the spirit, you will not enter. It means you will not be established in God, the kingdom of God. The power of God, the authority of God, the resources of God. A prophet can prophesy for you. One day it expires. One week you need another prophet. But when you enter the kingdom of God, you are established in the things of God. Established in the power of God. There are certain news that I don't expect in this life. There are certain things that they don't break my heart. There are certain things that they don't worry me. Why? I am established in God.
Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services, Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. Every Thursday for Word Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.